This is the final chapter of this module, chapter 6, which includes eight quiz questions to test your understanding of the materials. Question 1. As an at-the-money option approaches expiration, which of the following is true? Here are the four possible answers. Solution to question 1. The correct answer is C. We refer you to worksheet Vega in which we input the original terms of our Sterling call and find gamma as before at 366 and vega as before at 0.41. We now reduce the tenor, for example, to 0 0.05 and clearly see gamma rising while vega falls. Again, the correct answer, therefore, is C as in Charles. Question 2. You purchase a three-month call option priced at a 15% implied volatility, intending to delta hedge it for one month and then to sell it. During the first month, realized volatility turns out to be 12%, and at the end of that month, two-month calls are now being priced at an implied volatility of 10%. Which of these two effects would have benefited you? The four possible answers follow. Solution to question 2. The correct answer is B as in boy. When you delta hedge a purchased option, whether it is a call or a put, you want realized vol to exceed the implied vol at which you bought the option in order to benefit from being positive or long gamma. And furthermore, Upon selling the option, you want implied vol to have risen in order to benefit from being positive vega. Here the opposite happened on both counts. Question 3. Defining positive theta to mean that as time passes an option's value increases which of the following is true if you purchase a 30-year European sterling call assuming the same inputs that we have used throughout the module i.e. spot at 1.5 strike the same both interest rates at 5% and vol at 10% you should try to answer the question without using a model your four possible options are A, B, C and D. Solution to question 3. From worksheet GK we can see that as time passes the option would initially gain value because the diminishing, diminishing tenor reduces the impact of the discounting. So at 25 years, the value, which is 0 0.0722, becomes 0 0.0848, then 0 0.0976, then 0 0.1088, and appears to peak, as we'll prove in a moment, around the point with 10 years left until expiration at point 11.43 and then diminishing this tenor by one year at a time indeed we can see the value of the option decline as 
the time decay factor becomes the more powerful of all and with one year left a very large decrease in value has occurred therefore your theta in the first 20 years or so was actually positive and then became negative so the correct answer is A as an apple. Question 4. Question 4 is identical to question 3 except that the option this time has become American. And again you have the same four possible answers. Solution to question 4. Since we are now dealing with an American option, the longer the tenor, the more expensive it becomes. This was discussed and proven formally in module FX options. Therefore, as time passes, the price always goes down, so your theta is always negative. Therefore, the correct answer is D, as in David. Question 5. With the sterling dollar spot at 150, interest rates in both currencies close to zero, and implied vol at 15%, you go short a four-year at-the-money call on one million pounds notional and also purchase 500,000 pounds spot. Five minutes later spot has dropped to 1.4950 and implied vol has dropped to 10 percent. Your P&L would be closest to which of the following amounts? Once again you should please not use a model to answer this question. The four possible answers are as follows. Solution to question five. You should have recognized that since the option was at the money, the purchase of the sterling spot for 50% of the options notional represented a delta hedge for you so that the loss on the spot position when sterling fell would have pretty much cancelled the gain on your short call due to the spot movement leaving aside for now the drop in vol. We don't need to worry too much about gamma since the movement in spot was so small and the tenor is so long. The drop in vol actually would reduce the value of the option and so generate a gain since you are short. The simplified formula for net the money options premium of course is 0 0.4 we remind you times s times vol times the square root of time discounted at r for the tenor of the option. Since rates are close to zero, this implies a premium in US dollars of 1 million, the notional, times 0 0.4 times the spot, 1.5 times the vol at 15 times the square root of 4 which is 2 and we can ignore the denominator since rates are close to zero. So the premium is around $180,000. When vol drops and you cover the short, you would need to spend a premium of 1 million pounds, again times 0.4 times 1.5 times 10% the new vol times the square root of 4, which is $120,000, and therefore you have achieved a gain of $60,000 so far. You should have noticed and would probably want to point out that the option we are purchasing to cover our short actually is no longer exactly at the money since spot 
has fallen a little. And you would be right. So our use of the above formula in the second case is not absolutely strictly correct. However, the drop in the spot actually makes the option you're buying a little cheaper since the option is slightly out of the money now. And so, if anything, your profit would be a little bit greater than 60,000. So the nearest answer is a gain of 60,000 for the trader, and so the answer is C. Question 6. You buy a call and sell a put, each with a 1 million pound notional, and with deltas of 0 0.4 and negative 0 0.4 respectively. If you wish to immediately set up a delta hedge for the entire position, you should, and here are the four possible answers, Answer to question 6. The table we saw before, which we reproduce here, tells us to delta hedge along call, you would short the spot, and to delta hedge a short put, you would also short the spot. Delta being 0 0.4, this means shorting 400,000 pounds for each position so 800,000 pounds in aggregate. So the correct answer is D as in Davis. Question 7. You buy a one-year call and sell a one-year put, each with a notional of 1 million pounds and with deltas of 0 0.6 and minus 0 0.6 respectively. Both yield curves are flat at 5% and vol is 10% for both options. As the two options approach expiration, which of the following would be true? Once again, please do not use the worksheets to answer this question. The four possible answers follow. Solution to question 7. From the deltas, we know that both options are initially in the money. The point of mentioning the 10% vol and the one-year tenor is to comfort you that these options behave like normal options with regard to their delta and do not experience the peculiarities that arise when vol is very high or the tenor is very long. Also, since the curves are flat and lie at the same level, we know that all forwards are equal to the spot. Therefore, the two options will still be in the money at expiration, so their deltas move towards plus one and minus one, respectively. Therefore, the correct answer is B, as in boy. Question 8, final question. Which of the following is generally true for a European option that is in the money? Here are the four possible answers. Solution to question 8. An increase in vol certainly makes the option more expensive. Perhaps surprisingly, however, an increase in vol normally reduces the delta of an in-the-money option. This is best intuited, i.e. understood, 
intuitively by using the inaccurate definition of delta as the probability of exercise and realizing that once the option is in the money already an increase in vol in fact makes it more likely that it might fall back out of the money so this would cause delta to diminish We can check this by reverting to our normal Sterling call in worksheet GK2, except to set spot at 1.6 so that the option is in the money. We will not do this here, but you can. And you will find that increasing vol to 15%, for example, reduces delta from 0.8080 to 0.7274. Therefore, the correct answer is B as in boy. This completes the quiz and the entire module.